Pop. Welcome to my Thanksgiving video. Mm-hmm. Got my cold water running. So I can do what? Got my smoked turkey next. Welcome to my Thanksgiving video, guys. In this video, of course, first of all, what's up, so squat? Well, it's early in the morning. As you can tell, I got no pep to my step, y'all. I got no pep to my step. It's early in the morning. And, um, I am doing a Thanksgiving video with the sides. So I'm going to do an individual video for each side. I'm just dressing my, um, Neck bones off. Fill this cold water and the rest of them off. So I'm gonna see this empty pot right here. And the rest of my smoked turkey. This smoked turkey meat, y'all. And I don't pre cook them, I cook them along with my greens. I'll get one right there. I got my greens, which make it more easier. I'm gonna do step by step with everything, y'all. With these shredded collard greens right here. Welcome to my Thanksgiving video. Step by step start with the collard greens. And you always want to get those on first. Well, no, actually, Thanksgiving, I put my turkey on first. So I picked up on like three o'clock in the morning. Y'all, in this video, I don't have a turkey. They, I couldn't find one. They had a smoked turkey. I didn't want nobody smoked turkey. I'm not doing a whole bunch, a whole lot. Like I'm doing one bag of greens because this is this is just a sneak peek for my family. They know what they're gonna get. They know what they like. So I'm just rinsing my greens. These greens supposed to be already shredded, already clean. But I'm just rinsing them just to make sure. Ain't no people tell me something's already clean, already shredded. Just go ahead and get your stuff with some cold water. Just a rinse down with these greens. So I got Purdue. Two Purdue oven roasters. Then I remember I had two slabs of reds in my freezer. So if you guys want to know how. So basically you can concentrate on the sides in this video today. But everybody can get a turkey. So I was like, you know what, just get the most chicken. And what I'm going to do is that on Thanksgiving Eve, when it's like on Thanksgiving Day, like that 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to come live, prepare. I'm going to show you guys how I clean the season and, and place my turkey in the oven. That's what I'm going to do. And y'all can follow me on that. So remember on Thanksgiving, y'all, 3 a.m., I'm going to come live on YouTube. Since y'all can't get the turkeys in this video, y'all only get the sides. Um, and I'm doing the ribs and, and, and roasted chicken. I got the roasted chickens already in the bag, already seasoned. But I'm going to cut them out the bag. Oh, that's the only time they had. They didn't have no plain whole roasted chickens that I could season and do myself. But in this video, you are going to get collard greens and smoked turkey meat. You want to get potato salad. You don't get mashed potatoes. Um, you want to get macaroni and cheese. You want to get yams. You want to get double egg. You want to get a homemade cornbread dressing. You want to get rolls. Also, those are the ingredients I want you guys to focus on. Then we're going to be taking step by step. And the first thing that we're doing right now is that I put my greens. My greens will cook for a couple of hours. I say around four hours because that's just how I cook my greens. Let me tell you, so yeah. So I rinsed off these um, collard greens and we're gonna go ahead and start placing them in the um, pot. And again, since it's not a full, on my regular Thanksgiving, I probably would do like two bags of collard greens because collard greens shrink down to nothing. And my sink was cleaned out. My son cleaned my kitchen up real good for me. Cleaned my sink out with bleach and everything. So he knew I had to get up and cook. And he wanted to make sure everything was done for me. So yeah. I'm still in my pajamas. I said I was gonna get up at seven o'clock. I but I ain't wake up until 10. 
And that's because, give me that chicken broth over there on the shelf. That's because I was looking at that daggone barbarians. Y'all. I heard so many people talk about barbarians on Netflix. So I said, you know what? I never been season one. There's no shelf over there. So, Andre stopped my water, my greens. Cold water. So, I turned on season one. Chicken broth for extra flavor. I'm going to use one whole thing of chicken broth for the rest of the water. And I started by burying season one because season two just dropped. We're number six episodes. Y'all, I looked at oh, all this in trash. Man. All this. I looked at. Yeah, this one, macaroni. Um, I looked at all both seasons season one and season two. And what we going to do, when it's a big pot, I'm not feeling this all the way up, y'all. Yes, your hands is clean. I'm pushing my greens down. Remember, your kitchen your way, my kitchen my way. All right, that's enough. Let's get this on the stove. All right, guys. I'm back in the sink with another pot. I'm making homemade on stuff. I got a small, if I was doing this for my regular Thanksgiving, I had two of these. But these are bonus things, chicken thighs. I'm about to wash it, clean them, season them up, and let these boil. Get all that fat and all that stuff out of them. Get all that fat. Get off my chicken. There's not that much fat on here because they they took the skin off. There's really not that much slime on them either. See all that? I'm sorry, I gotta wash them. I gotta do something to my chicken. Feel the fat. Get that slime. Get that skin up off of them. Cold water. It's not, I'm surprised not that much slime and stuff on these chicken thighs. Oh. I'm ready to um, put my, um, all right, these are good. Cold water. Number two. Oh, it's my uh, uh, mm -hmm. All right. On the stove. So I can shred these. I get let these bowl of cook with some season. This is about to hit the stove. These are my chicken thighs. All right, y'all. Y'all might can see a ton of it. On your powder. All the powder. A fleet season. Collard greens, y'all. Joshua, in this refrigerator, and I'm recording. Joshua, give me a container of celery and a container of onions. Are you recording? Yeah. Um, we doing a pre-Thanksgiving side. Wow. What she said? Nothing. The onions and she celery. Oh, I don't got no wig on. Grandma ain't showing herself. She know what grandma need when she get like it's in the containers. I don't want people to say nothing about you. I don't want people to say nothing about me either, baby. Yes. Like yeah. It's celery. One celery, Ooh, one onion. Celery. Ew. Yeah, that's a grandma. That's disgusting. 
And which one? And there's one like this for onions. All right, but let me go get this lolly. Oh, my baby said, we your wig? Because I don't want people to say nothing about you. I, I got things already pre-cut. So, I got some celery. Pre-cut celery. Going in here. And say something for my stuff. And... Yo, these free cup containers hard to open, honey. A pre cut onion going in here. And I'll save the rest of this for my stuffing. Chop up some green peppers. Make a trinity. Alright. We're gonna let all this stuff cook. I'll be back, guys. Because I've answered cook breakfast real quick with itself. Come back. Put my potatoes on. Okay, so squad. While my greens is on, my chicken is boiling for my dressing. Preheating the oven at 375. Let's make a quick homemade cornbread for our cornbread dressing. I got this glass dish right here. Guys, I told you everything's been done small. Take about five tablespoons of butter. And I'm going to place this in my dish. I'm going to place this in the oven. Because I want this butter to melt in my dish. About five tablespoons of butter. I'm placing that in the oven. While that's melting, what we're going to be doing, I'm going to take this bowl. This is the cornmeal. Some people use white cornmeal. This is the cornmeal I use. This is what a cornmeal I grew up in my family used. This yellow cornmeal. But some people use white cornmeal. Or just buy a box cornmeal because, hey, it's Thanksgiving. We ain't got time for all that. Go to the store. Buy some cornbreads. It's already made. And we're going to do this cornbread. And we're going to use an all-purpose flour, not a self-rising flour. And I'm going to use one cup. I'm not putting no sugar. Yeah, she's making a mess. I'm not putting no sugar in this cornbread. Because this is going to be a dressing. I don't want no sweet dressing. One cup of cornmeal. I still forgot the egg. I'm going to get up and get my egg. And I forgot my oil. I'm using two tablespoons of granola oil. If you got vegetable oil, Use vegetable oil. I told you I switched my oil up. Canola or vegetable. So, let me go get that and I'll be back. Alright guys, we left off at. Got my canola oil. Got my two eggs. One cup of cornmeal. One cup of all-purpose flour. I use two eggs. Remember, no sugar. I'm not making a sweet cornbread. That was two eggs. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons of canola oil or vegetable oil. Vegetable oil. I got baking powder. I'm gonna go ahead and use two teaspoons. A baking powder. I'm not using a half a teaspoon of salt because there's no sugar in this. You can, if you add sugar to yours, um, use at least a half a teaspoon of salt or something. But I didn't add any sugar to this. And I got my buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, honey, use regular milk. If you don't have buttermilk, use what I, you can put a, um, a cup of buttermilk to one teaspoon of, um, um, is it one teaspoon, one tablespoon? I'm going to double check that. I think it's one tablespoon to one cup of buttermilk. And you can use some white vinegar or you can use some um, lemon to make your own buttermilk. Let it sit for like, I let mine sit like five, ten minutes. It's going to curl and it's going to turn to a buttermilk. Yeah, but in this in here, we're making a quick cornbread by cornbread stuffing. 
I'm making a small everything, y'all. We're not doing anything large. Everything is going to be Sunday dinner size. But it's going to be all the size of Thanksgiving. Again, I didn't get a turkey just because they didn't have any turkey. I searched like four or five stores on Instacart. That did. They still bring me a smoke fully cooked turkey and not one more smoke fully cooked turkey. That's in the freezer. I'm going to use that at Thanksgiving for my greens. So, I am doing two oven roasters and some ribs. Now, on Thanksgiving Day at 3 a.m., if you want to see how I prepare my turkey, I put my turkey in the oven overnight around 3 o'clock in the morning. Learned that from my mom. Been doing that my whole life. And if you come live with me at 3 a.m. on Thanksgiving Day, that's when you guys will show. I'll show you guys how I, you know, take everything out the turkey, how I wash it, clean it inside out, and how I stuff it with um, onions and lemons and garlic and then how I season it and I put that bad boy in the oven and it's like the house smell all oh, perfectly good okay so I'm waiting my butter to melt once this butter melt we gonna add the butter milk we're gonna stir it up oh, let's see. okay this is my pan I'm using my butter is in the oven my butter melted I need some butter in the pan. Let me add some buttermilk. Not that much buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, hey, use a little bit of um. My sister was gonna get some food. She said, "I want to play." I'm using about a cup of milk, y'all. A cup of buttermilk. So you know, when you get those cornbread boxes, do it say use um do it say use buttermilk? We use buttermilk when we're doing it homemade. But let me just come across you guys. I apologize. But they say use what? Just some milk, right? So if you ain't got no buttermilk, if you ain't got no lemons or nothing to um to make you no know, buttermilk, honey, then use a regular milk. All right, this is ready. This is the cornbread. Oh, my chicken is going, because I want to do my cornbread, because it's going to cook, my meats is going to cook on a different temperature. So, I got to do my cornbread, get it out the way. And then I'm going to show you guys how I make my homemade cornbread dressing. Because even though I use cornbread, I still buy stuff in mix. But not this ones in the box, ones in the bag. The bread, season, and the season crumbles. The season cues. Look at that, and it's still butter. Look at this. It's hot. It's still butter in here. You see that butter in there? Still butter in the pan. Cornbread going. When you cook at Thanksgiving, anytime you cook it, anything, you want to make your life easy. Wash the dishes as you go along. Dry them out, put them up. So at the end of you get finished cooking, the only thing gonna be on the stove is what your food is in. That's it, that's all. Wash the dishes as you go. So y'all, I'm stepping by stepping with this video. You might have to walk in and see. Once the cornbread come out, I'm putting my bread to my chicken in. They're going at the same time. All right, y'all. All right, y'all preparing my pan. My cornbread almost done. I did get my potatoes on. I'll show you guys that in a minute. The potatoes are so big, I think I only use like four. But I'm preparing my cookie sheet because I'm um, about to season my baby back ribs. And normally with my ribs, I do apple juice. I don't have no apple juice. I, you know, trying to think of everything that I use to, put, to do my ribs with, I just couldn't. And I forgot the apple juice. 
I really did. So, I'm not going to be paying this year for apple juice today. But guess what? They still come out wonderful, guys, even without the apple juice. So, this is my cookie sheet they're going to cook on. Everything else is a normal pan that's going in this oven. But I am using the cookie sheet for this right now. So, I'm doing one bread at a time. So, let me just place this on here. And we'll be back. So, this is a baby back red. Now, I told you guys I couldn't get my hand on any turkey. It had whole pre-cooked smoked turkeys. I did not want that. I had two um, slabs of baby back ribs in my refrigerator, in my freezer. Took those out. I got two Purdue pre-seasoned, already pre-seasoned um, roasters. We're going to be using those. Again, I'll go live Thanksgiving 3, 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to show you guys how I clean and prep my turkey and put it in the oven. That was complete seasoning. I believe this is an onion garlic or powder. Let me see. This is garlic powder. And we're going to do on both sides of these ribs. And this is onion powder. And a little bit of bouillon. You gotta have remember a little bit of bouillon. Let me look at this cornbread. Cornbread cooking up 375 the way I want it. So the light brown sugar. Yeah, she says sugar, yes. It's like my specialty. This is a rug. A light brown sugar. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to rub this all in. Yeah, I use this hand to rub in. I'm about to use my other hand. And we're going to do both these ribs. Rub that seasoning like I'm lotioning her up. And they're going to flip it. So, I'm going to do with my other hand. I ain't getting up, wash my hand. And all the same seasoning. I got my other hand ready to all the same seasoning. We want flavor. these ribs back and front and you can use whatever season you prefer whatever season that you like then some bouillon uh, and I started 10 o'clock this morning like I said I was up to 7 30 in the morning the more brown sugar. I was up to 7 30 in the morning looking at that day on barbarian. Bands watch both seasons. Both seasons, y'all. And there we go. These ribs are what? Season. And all that extra season that's right here, it is gonna fold up and to that red. Fold up, fold down, and to that red. I'm about to grab me another piece of my pool. Grab me a paper towel in my hand. But I'm gonna go grab this other red. I just want to see y'all how I prepared it. Now I'm gonna pull. And I'm wrapping this red up. And this gonna pull. And all the reason I'm putting in it is I took my red for 300. 300 y'all and right now my oven is on 375 because of that um cornbread in there but this rib is wrapped and ready to go and i'm ready to do the second one all right hands been washed i'll go back to using my right hand now touching my seasons hands been washed i'm 
Again, I'm using complete onion powder, garlic powder, brown sugar, and a little bit of bouillon. Or you will use saffron seasoning. And remember, you're gonna do both sides. And these are I want my baby back, baby back, baby back. These are baby back ribs, y'all. So on Thanksgiving Day, I'm not making ribs. On Thanksgiving Day, I'm making turkey, ham, roast, and fried chicken. On Thanksgiving Day. That's what I'm making on Thanksgiving Day. But for today, for you guys, I had these ribs in the in the um in there so i decided to um you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna um i'm gonna rub with my left hand just because I, i'm right handed and i need my right hand so i'm gonna rub with my left hand and again just like the other one season this baby back rib down so yeah so and everybody may can't afford it um probably can't afford it um a turkey. So you may want to know how to cook some of these ribs and a rotisserie. But again, they didn't have no plain rotisserie to produce rotisseries. If I had to get the rotisserie with the seasoning already in it, I'm telling you, these grocery stores are strapped in, y'all. And I was trying to go, why I can't find a turkey? My son said, Mom, maybe it ain't time. I said, when I went to Little's, I saw a turkey in there. And the turkey sold out already. I better get y'all turkey. And the one, then when I saw them, you know, I did pick it. They, they, turkey's running like $43, young. Yeah. That's say, young. Yeah. <laughs> turkey's about 43 bucks for a turkey. I'm going to let y'all know that now. Turkeys are running about $43. That's, a, that's what I've seen them running for. About $43. So have you a good $50, 60 for a turkey. I'm sorry to say, I remember you get a turkey for 25 and you probably still can't look, but I've been seeing them for, I've seen them for, i seen one for 30 something. i seen one for, the half I've seen the turkey for, but they didn't have it was $43. It was $43, y'all. So let me go wash my hands. So I can wrap this. I am finished with this. My cornbread is almost done. So my cornbread come out. I'll turn that oven down to 300. I'll put my chicken in and my um, ribs in. My potatoes are on. On my ribs. So as the cornbread go out, let me clean up all my seasons. These ribs going in the oven. Okay, guys, this is my cornbread. And even though I can let it get a little bit darker, but I ain't worried about getting a little bit darker. As long as it's done, I just want it for my um. It's nice and soft. Even though <laughs> we're not eating it, I still I can't help it. I'm gonna put butter on my cornbread. All right, I'm gonna let this cornbread cool down. My, my chicken is actually really done. I'm going to let this cornbread cool down. And the ribs are in the oven. Look at the cornbread, guys. I'm going to let the cornbread cool down. So I'm just going to chop it up. Add my bag of um, stuffing, crouton dresses that I buy. And I mix with my cornbread. Let the chicken cool down. So when we come back, we're about to place 
our chicken chicken. I'm about to prep the chicken. Remember I told you these are the uh, Purdue oven ready seasoned chicken. They're in a bag. But what I'm going to do, I'm take them out the bag. Put them in my turkey pan and put a little foil on them. And I'm about to turn my oven down for 375 to 300. But I'm going to let my ribs and my chicken cook at the same time. And then we're going to prep the yams. Because I'm put the yams on the stove. Show you guys how I do my yams afterwards. Okay, guys. These are my two chicken. Now, this is what they come. This is the bag they come in. Let me show you guys. This complete whole roaster, complete chicken. You might see them already seasoned and bagged. So, what I did, I took them out the bag. I took them out the bag. I rinsed them off, and I um, I want to do my own seasoning. I'm wrapping in my own before. I got this butter right here. What I'm going to do, this is going to help my season stick. I'm not going to undo because they had these chickens perfectly um, tied. I'm not going to undo that. But what I am going to do, I'm going to take some of this butter. And the chicken is still wet because I've rinsed it. I'm not pet drying it because I want my skin to stick to it. I want my season to stick to it. But I am going to rub it down. And it's butter. Okay. And if you don't have butter, you use some olive oil, canola oil, just to get it, you know, because it's gonna help with get that um chicken to a crisp the way you want it. Let me grab your paper towel. Okay. Now my season of choice is going to be garlic pepper, onion powder, complete smoked paprika, and pepper. And that's going to be my season of choice. So I'm going to go in. Guys, you know, who is, how do I run out of pepper? I don't run out of pepper. I'm that pepper girl. I think I don't have, a, I think I don't have no pepper. I might got some downstairs. But. Little double shake, something come out of them. <laughs> they go in the trash can. And I'm not putting any juices or anything. Cause you know why? Chicken, and I'm not rubbing this in either. Chicken supply its own water. That's why when I um, bake my chicken and stuff, I guess I'm using powder. So they're like, oh my goodness, but this is powder. It's not salt. Um, it's gonna make its own food. You once you wrap it up and get the sweating and cooking in that oven, and I told a story. I think I am gonna rub everything in, honey. Everybody say nothing, okay? You ain't gotta worry about it sticking. Now, if you used to putting a little bit of fluids, some chicken broth, some water, by all means, your kitchen your way, my kitchen my way. This is my complete. Okay. And that's a smoke. I'm going in with some smoked paprika. I can hit the camera, y'all. <laughs> That's why I'm gonna rub her in and make sure flavor is everywhere. Even though I did put some butter on there, because I got a little bit of canola oil left, let me just put a little bit canola oil on that, on that chicken. I'm gonna put what I have left in here. That way, this will go ahead and hit the trash. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. Go in there with my hands. We gonna get the, I'm just gonna rub it all in. 
down on the side. And see, it's water already in the pot from the chicken draining from me rinsing them all. Beautifully, beautifully. Look at that. All right, let me go wash my hands. Got to pull off this little full. And it's going in the oven, y'all. Because I cook my ribs on 300. So I'm going to go ahead and just go in there with it. This, the ribs got the bottom shelf. This is about to have the top shelf. And just like that, our greens on, our cornbread done. The two meats are now in the oven. I'll put all my seasonings up. And I'll be back when my chicken cool off and we're going to make that stuff. I'm going to peel these sweet potatoes. Okay, so stop. So, my chicken is done. My broth is done. But what I want to do, and I'm sorry for reaching in front of you guys. I knew I was going to do this before. And I'm reaching. Look at that. Oh! <laughs> okay, what I want to do, look at the steam. Come on, let me pull you up, son. Not bad. Look at the steam coming from this. I'm gonna take some of these raw onions, but I don't think I had enough. Put some in there, cause I need a trinity. And I was, what I was gonna do, I was gonna go ahead and just drain everything, and I was gonna saute some more um, onions and um, celery, and then cut up some little bit of green peppers, and you know, and soften it up on the stove. But guess what? This is hot. The um. Everything is cooling down, and that is hot. So what I'm going to do is that I'm, I just went on and add because I'm be using this. Yes. Yeah, so, so a trinity is the green peppers, onion, and celery, and I need pork, and I got poultry season for my um for my um stuffing. So these are the three things. Some people eat the carrots. I'm not a carrot person, so they'll steal barley carrots to make their stock or make their broth. But um, I got carrots in there. I'm saying it's my carrot cake. Because I'm not doing a dessert. And did I mention I'm not doing a dessert in this video, y'all? I told y'all I was going to do a dessert, but I decided for more content, because you're going to be thinking, I want to just put out uh, three dessert videos for Thanksgiving the carrot cake, sweet potato pie, and I have to think of that last dessert video. So I'll put out three dessert videos for Thanksgiving, and they all be coming up the next week or two. So that if you want to make it, you'll get your ingredient. I'm chopping these green peppers up real fine, okay? And they're gonna everything gonna get salt in here. All this is going into my stuff. This is right here is the flavoring for my stuffing. My carrots. I'm sorry. <laughs> My onions, my celery, and my pepper, and my chicken, and that and that broth was seasoned with season. Um, it was seasoned with um, onion powder, garlic powder, complete, and some bouillon, tomato bouillon, or you have some sauce. But and that's what it was seasoned with. So this um, this broth is um, very flavorful. And what I'm going to do, I'm just like, oh, I put in these extra. Onions, the extra um, celery, and now some um, pepper, green pepper. So I'm gonna let it just cool off in this water, and it's gonna soften. I ain't got dirt no more dishes. I ain't gotta saute my veggies. It's gonna sit in this. It's gonna sit in this broth. It's nice and hot. Just pulled off the stove, and um, they're gonna get salt. I just want to salt, but they're gonna go in the oven. 
I use about a half a um a half a pepper. And then for this, you're gonna need either um so you're gonna need the chicken. You're gonna need your cornbread. It don't have to be homemade. Again, you go to the store, you can buy the cornbread, you can use box cornbread, anything you want. Uh, or you can make it homemade. Uh, but you're gonna need either cream of chicken or cream of celery. Oh honey, you can use both. I'm just using cream of chicken, I'm gonna use cream of celery. And your cornbread and your boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And I'm gonna put the fall back on this and I'm gonna let that heat and it steams on this. Just sit it on to the side right here. It's gonna soften that crunch of that celery, pepper, and onion. By the time I'm ready, because my cornbread is still kind of warm, by the time that cornbread cools down, y'all, it's gonna be ready to go. We're gonna mix it up. And I then I had to go find my cream of chicken. I know I bought some. <laughs> Girl, it's like you got to go search and find stuff. The other people pick groceries up. I don't know when nobody picked nothing up, but we'll be back. So, yeah, I got like four big potatoes on one potato salad. Again, I told you guys, everything getting that small. My collard greens. Thank you, whoever got me this long spoon. I am loving it. The greens been seasoned. I'll season again, add some butter to them but, and vinegar. But they cooking. So yeah. Smart. We're about to make the stuff, and I think the chicken and stuff's cool. When I say I use, this is what I use too. Besides, um, besides this cornbread stuffing, I use this peppers from um, Cube stuffing mix. It's already seasoned. This is the herb season. Sometimes I get the blue one, which is the original, which I didn't have. And I mix this in with my cornbread. It's just something that I do. I just love doing. Now, Cornbread is ready. I think it's cool down. I, I know I know for sure the cornbread cool down. Yeah. This cornbread is cool down. It smells so good. And it, all you need is some sugar in that cornbread. <laughs> Woo! And it'd be edible. So with this cornbread, what I'm gonna do guys, let me put you up a little bit more. Mm, cornbread smells good. Cornbread still hot. <laughs> Man, it smells so good. It takes food a long time. It's buttery. They like cornbread, no sugar. That's cornbread still hot. Make it as big and as small. And you can always make this stuff two days before. You have a knock. You know, you might be doing everything. The day of Thanksgiving. I'm going to use some cream of chicken. Now, for this right here, I'm going to use the whole bag. And I might use the whole bag, but this is a little bag. I don't need to say it. I ain't put that much more. All right, let me get my tongues for my chicken. Guys, you can smell the peppers and the seasoning. Bone skin and chicken thighs. See, I told you my stuff won't get soft. 
I was gonna saute and not saute. Excuse me. Why well, always him? Mmm. Ooh, that broth is good. That chicken is flavorful. Yeah, it's coming apart. Let me get the turn on. I may know how to use my hands. I had three bonus spinach chicken thighs, like I said. They only getting. Mmm. I keep picking everything. Let me see how I shred it with the fork versus the spoon, guys. I'm versus my hand because this chicken is still hot. See the steam coming off of it? And there's gonna be some chicken in the um And you can use the turkey. You can use I will I I will use the dark meat of the turkey. I'm not a big fan of white meat stuff when it comes to chicken wings. That's it. A lot of people probably don't know chicken wings. It is dark meat. It is white meat. But it is. And that's really the only who is <laughs> only white meat I prefer. Is the um chicken wing other than that. I'm a dark meat girl. I love a thighs is my favorite part of the chicken. That's Andrew. They gonna get some chicken in here, but they not gonna get a whole lot. This is just a tease, y'all. This is to show you guys my size. Thanksgiving size, 2022. That's what I'm gonna call this video. And I'm showing you step by step on each side. Is that oh, did she skip something? Nope. And look at that. That chicken was so cooked so well, it was it it it, came, it just came apart. And it's so flavorful with the peppers and celery. Again, if you're into onions, by all means, add not onions, carrots. Um, add some chop some carrots up or use those little baby some carrots and put in there. Do do what you do, okay? Do what you do. But I'm not one full carrot. You can use sage for season or poultry season. I'm going with poultry season, garlic pepper, onion powder. And I'm going to go poultry season. Poultry season has sage in it. It really do. So I just um, go for the poultry season. A little bit garlic pepper, onion powder. And start off with a little bit because you can always add but you can't never you can't never take away y'all no bit of onion powder garlic powder you can always add uh, and this is garlic powder and you can't take away okay and this is not nothing i will be stirring with my hands let me see Fashion right here, guys. And, and put that in the for me. And put that in the And some of this great, this good old homemade chicken broth that's seasoned real well. And I'm going to use what I got this homemade chicken broth. Then I got some regular chicken broth, too. Put that in the And remember, wash it just as you go along. See, this is not wet enough for me. How much chicken broth right there? I always buy extra, y'all. This is my stuffing. It's easy, y'all. Simple. Taste it. This is box chicken broth. And then, my cream of chicken. Cream of mushroom, cream of celery, cream of chicken. Add it all. 
Ooh, that smell like some good old stuff. Add it all. Man, I mean, if I grew up on stove top box stuffing. My mother, she cooked, but she didn't cook everything homemade. I grew up on stove top stuffing. Um, or eat with generic brand stuffing. You know, whatever your coins was telling you when you went to the grocery store in the holidays. But when I became an adult, I learned how to make homemade, I'm gonna get everything, homemade dressings and all that stuff. And I prefer the flavor and the taste than to that box. You know? I think I got it on. Yeah. Make sure I could actually got a spoon to scrape my chicken, my cream of chicken out. Yeah. Remember how you like your stuff in the taste? Cream of celery, cream of mushroom, cream of chicken. Oh, you want cream of mushroom, cream of celery, cream of chicken? Shoot. Sure. Is that to you? Add it up. This is my homemade dressing. I know I'm not much of a stirrer because of the arthritis. Uh. Mm. Some people like it so wet that you be like, what the heck is that? That's the light. Something. I don't like mine, it's too wet. I'll tell you, when I say it smells good, honey. Let me just taste it. Oh. Um, shoot. This bad baby don't need no more nothing. Tastes like stuffing. The stuffing flavor is dead. Hmm. Yeah, there's a teeny bit more sage. I'm adding a teeny bit. For real. I don't need it. My dressing is done. Let me get my aluminum pan. I'm going to stir it up. But let me get my aluminum pan. It's not going to oven yet, but it's going in its pan. The one four gonna get placed on top of it. Yeah. Remember, always add a little bit seasoning, because you can always add more. And my homemade chicken stuffing is ready to go in the pan. Oh, they got a big piece of chicken. Yeah. I know I can't stir it for too much. I want my arthritis to start acting up. But yeah. Oh, it smells good, y'all. It smells good. All right, y'all. This stuff is ready. Little pan is washed out. And stuffing is going in. Yeah. Wash your dishes. Oh, this smells so good. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boo boo. All right, guys. Put some lemon foil on this. And this stuff is gonna go in the oven. Okay, so Spy, if you've been with me for a minute, you already know my, my fame comes on anytime my kitchen can happen. So, I peeled my sweet potatoes. Again, this is a small little piece. So I got about seven sweet potatoes here. About seven sweet potatoes. But it's like a, this is a small little piece. 
Y'all, I love these sweet potatoes like this. Who like to boil these sweet potatoes first? I normally do, but I love my sweet potatoes like this, man. So, let me tell you, this cut on the sweet potato, trying to cut the sweet potatoes is real. I wish I, I, I found them in the chunk. Look, I'm making room. And I usually cut with this back end. See this back end right here? I don't cut with the front end. I cut with this back end right there. So, I do the back end. Y'all, trying to cut a sweet potato is real, okay? You got hair. I should pull it out. I got some knives. Well, it's gonna see me for my birthday. I think I might pull one of my knives out. But trying to cut a sweet potato, honey, you need a good knife. Is wool out. Let me get one of my new knives. All right, guys, I just got this off the box. One of the new knives. One of my subscribers so far. I love the little cover. I'm not gonna put it back on the cover because I had to wash it. This is my first time using it. Thank you again. Let's see if we get these two tapes. I'm still gonna go in the way I met. I used to cut with this back end right there. Let's see. A sweet potato is this. My name. Okay. Much better. So you gotta have a good night. Mess around with sweet potatoes, y'all. You know it. I know I'm scaring some of y'all to death. <laughs> I'm scared myself, but I keep wanting these, these sweet potatoes, and I'm not boiling them. I want them to get down to the butt, I just cut them. And that was a big one anyway. I'm going to put these in the strainer. I'm going to wash them all. Okay. Hello, knife. Hello, knife. <laughs> now, you guys have got to do what I'm doing. I um, mean, I just love these sweet potatoes. And you actually can find, my grandmother can find these already cut. But they, they sell out. Oh, I love this knife. They sell out too, um, too, too fast. I said, oh, you stick again. Just like that. And we're going to rinse them all and get them on the stove. Use this at Grandma Jackie. Y'all know about skin and coming. And see, the little they are, it's the big ones that's off, that's, um, that's tough to cut. So when you go get the sweet potatoes, don't get them big giant ones if you're trying to cut them in circles like this. Get the more small, the more smaller ones, cause they're easy to cut. They're easy to cut. The more smaller ones, they make it cut so much easier. See how more easy that cut is? Instead of getting them big giant sweet potatoes, I'm going for what. And it does see, if you don't pick out your sweet potatoes. And you just see taste already bagged up. You don't look like, ooh, child. Somebody says, oh my God, let's see. I know. <laughs> my brother said, oh, I can't watch. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, I can't watch. Okay. 
little ones, you'll cut right through like butter. They cut like butter. Girl, I got y'all. <laughs> My ticket smell good. I ain't trying to be in the hospital. We done. She did it. Let's mess these off. <laughs> and we're going to get them in the pan. And we're going to put all our seasoning. Salt with that Grandma Jackie. Guys, it's going to be a description below. Go to Sofa Tea LLC because I will be using that Grandma Jackie Sweet Potato Pie Mix. It makes more than just pies and bring flavor to your um, sweet potatoes as well. I will be using that Sofa Tea Original Flour. Everything is available. So I make that with my um, macaroni. I use that as a seasoned roux. So you don't have to go put all those seasonings in your macaroni. It's flavors is going to pop because that roux cheese sauce got all that flavor from that seasoned flour. All right, let me go rinse off these potatoes. Right, guys, let's make some yams. I got my pan right here. We're going to throw some yams up in here. Let me get this yam. <laughs> and you know I'm recording. It smells like Thanksgiving. Well, I ain't know, but at least they know I ain't lying. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna put two layers. Yeah, I told y'all, yeah, I had smell a vision. It smelled good up in this baby. And I tell you, it smelled good. I put my butter and vanilla on last. Get your grandma jockey. Two tape pie mix. So the tea LLC. Not a whole lot. Enough because this has that nutmeg and um ginger and allspice the flavors that people put in their sweet potatoes so i don't put that much but i put enough because ginger and stuff is overwhelming brown sugar white sugar and it's like you do in the oven I add my butter at the end once they start cooking real good we're gonna do what we're gonna put all those flavors gotta open me up and you're simmering I get my cinnamon open. One minute. Cinnamon open. Now, if you don't like a lot of cinnamon, or if you don't want to layer your flavors, honey, your kitchen your way, my kitchen my way. Okay. So with tea, LSC, y'all. So we'll take the pie mix. Get that flavor. I love this flavor that it gives. This sweet potato. Some regular sugar. And this is just going to make a syrup. And this is going to cook all up, maybe. No, I make candy yams, y'all. Okay. Opening up me some more brown sugar. My family around waiting on food. I told them the food be done by the time halftime of the rest. And then I call Redskins. The commander. Brown sugar. I'm gonna clean all this up. And then 
Turn the stove on. Turn it down on a medium low. There's a little bit of water. About a half a cup. If I rinse these things off, they're gonna make their own water. And put the top on them, they're gonna steam. And they're gonna be the yams. Let me clean this right, up. So it's about, we're about to get our yeast roll started. And I got two cups of warm milk. The milk can't be too hot, okay, guys? Milk okay. can't have to be something real quick. Okay, two cups. This is it. Because there's no guarantee I'm going to put this in the description. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, there's no guarantee, okay? Y'all girl is exhausted, but okay. So this is two cups of warm milk. We're going to go in with three teaspoons. Three teaspoons of yeast, y'all. Three teaspoons of yeast. So it's going to be one. Two. Okay, I got my other pack up. There's three teaspoons of yeast. And that's on in the little individual packs on the yeast, two and a half teaspoons. So if you get the little individual packs, you know you're gonna need two packs because you want three teaspoons and a pack on the yeast, two and a half. Now, that's three. And then, I'm gonna go in with what? A half a cup of honey. This is gonna be a half a cup of honey. Let me get it all out. And we're gonna let this bloom for like five to seven minutes. And we're gonna come back with our teaspoon. Ooh, let me see. Let me tell you about that one. I get all this honey out. We'll come back with our teaspoon of salt, our eggs, our eight tablespoons of butter, unsalted butter. I don't like the salted butter. Unsalted butter. All right, I'll stir this up. And we'll be back like then. Five minutes, guys. We'll be back in five minutes. Gonna let that bloom. Guys, you see that my yeast already start blooming? Okay, our yeast is blooming, right? We gonna go in with what? A teaspoon of salt, guys. A teaspoon of salt. We gonna go in with eight tablespoons and your butter got to be room temperature salt so we'll go over eight tablespoons of butter and i like the butter because it has the lines on it so eight tablespoons is actually the whole ooh, excuse me the whole stick of butter at room temperature okay that's eight tablespoons of butter i have unsalted butter And we're going to go up with two, two egg yolks, y'all. Ooh, I had them sitting. Two egg yolks. And we're going to stir all up together. Make sure that butter is room temperature. And now we're going to go in with six cups. A bread flour. Now, if you got all purpose flour, you can. But when I'm making any type of bread or rolls, I like to use bread flour. I don't get any particular brand. I got my local store, Giant Food. I got their brand. And yeah. So we're going to go over six cups. Six cups of flour. Six cups of bread flour. I'll come along with you as I go. Well, if you don't have honey, you can substitute for um you can do sugar. What's that? Number two. Number 
that's three. And I don't have my dough hook, so I am doing it what they used to do it a long time ago. Before they had all these kitchen aids. This is full. Yes, I'm finally trying to get all my flour out of my container. Five. Again, just cooking. I'm about to put the barbecue sauce on my on, on my um six. Alright. And alright guys, and now we're gonna stir it all up together. I have to find my dough hook. So, we're going to do it this way. And I'm going to clean them up and make me a space on this counter. I don't know. Ooh, I need my arm in the way. <laughs> Look at my dough. And my rolls. And these are going to rise about 45 minutes to an hour. But let me get a space for this count off this counter, clean my mess up, and we're going to come back. And we're going to knead this and put it in a grease bowl. Okay? Be right back. Okay, guys, I done cleaned and dried my surface off. So let me get you take me some of this red flour. You want to take some of this red flour and or your regular flour. And you just want to, you about to get a hand dirty, baby. Yeah. So we about to need, we about to need this flour. You just want to dump it. Right onto this. I'm gonna find my dough hook. I know it's in my cabinet somewhere. I'm gonna put this down. Y'all can wash it. I'm gonna put some flour on my hand. And y'all, I'm just gonna knead this flour. I'm gonna push and roll. Push with my back hand right here until it's almost like elastic. Push and roll. I'm pushing and I'm rolling. Push and roll. I'm gonna get some more flour. Push and roll. So it's not sticky no more. So it's not sticky no more. See, it's not getting sticky. That sticky means it's going away. It's almost like an elastic feel to it. Put more flour down on your hand and on that. And see? There we go. But uh, if you do this with a hook, you don't need to knead it because the hook is kneading it for you. All that you need to do is put it in a um, a bowl, a grease bowl. But since I don't have my um. I got really good for it. Alright. 
I'm gonna leave it just like this. So see how see the sponge back? See how I come back? That's ready. Let me give me a grease bowl. I got my bowl right here. Let me move my um delta side. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in my bowl. I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm gonna spread the oils all around my bowl. On my, on my dough rise, this is gonna go for 45 minutes. I'm gonna put a little more oil in there. I want a day to slide my dough. I ain't put that much. Always, like I said, you always start little. And you end up with a lot. All right, I'll let this rise for 45 minutes. And this greens bowl. In it go. I'm gonna put my paper, put my um. What's it that called? Put my tea towel over it, and let it do what it do, and we be back. All right, y'all, the ribs done. Let's unravel them. They are in need of barbecue sauce. They are hot. I like to burn myself. I'm just going to pull the bowl off of them as much as I can. I don't need this full no more. I think I should have done really good. Really. Pulling out the bone. Baby, tell me I can't make no ribs in the oven. Oh, you can taste the flavor. Mmm. They're seasoned really, really well. No, I didn't. With all this cooking that I'm doing, I was sold out of my barbecue sauce. So I'm using what I already had in the house. So besides mine, I love baby Ray. So, and I, with all this cooking, I just ain't feel like making no more. So, I am going now. Get baby Ray. Started. I'm gonna try my best to flip these babies. And so we got 45 minutes in the rolls. So I'm gonna put that macaroni water on. I know some people's waiting on that. I'm not a big barbecue sauce person. And I think, do I need to flip it? The barbecue sauce on the back. I really don't want to flip it. I think it's gonna break up. Maybe I have. You gotta have barbecue sauce. Y'all gotta know why I did that, right? I don't like a lot of barbecue sauce. <laughs> I'm about to eat that, baby. Mm mm mm. Mm. Cook out that food, y'all. Mm-hmm. 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 
I'm not flipping it. I don't want to break up. I'm putting them in the oven just like that. Alright, she's gonna go back in the oven. Get some crisp to her. Look at that bobby, look at the ribs. Alright guys, these ribs done for the oven to get them brown, let the barbecue sauce Alright y'all, look at them yams. They ready. Look at that glaze. Alright. Look at them yams. Honey, they look good, they smell good. You hear me? Perfectly cooked. I'm going to put a half a stick of butter, unsalted butter. Remember, I didn't put no butter on it. A half a stick of butter. Let it just soak all down in there. Some vanilla, just because you can. I put that top back on it. Just drink a little bit of Grandma Jackie sauce on it. Some more of this Grandma Jackie. This for a little bit more flavor. Okay. Two potatoes ready. I'm going to let them simmer. About to cut them off. And just let the butter do what it do. They done. And they're off. Put them to the back of the stove. Now let's go ahead and see what these collard greens are doing. I don't know if y'all can get up that high. That's the high as we go. With the greens and meat. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. I forgot to show y'all when I added more seasoning in the um, vinegar. I'm about to add the butter to it. Man, look at them man. All right, so squad, I'm putting some flour down on my space. I wipe and clean my space, dry it again, put some flour down, just because my dough is ready. Y'all wanna see how this dough has risen? Look at that dough. Look at that dough. That dough has risen, baby. 45 minutes to an hour. So, what I'm going to do is that, I don't know if you guys can see, I'm going to punch it down and pull it out. Ooh. We're making some homemade rolls, boo. Let me see if I can. Okay. Just a little bit. Okay. Oh, and it smells, you can smell the bread, okay? What I'm going to do, I'm going to make some homemade rolls. Okay. I'm going to flatten this down. I 
like a square. take my knife. I'm going to put a little bit of flour. I use the knife for Reggie. Because I, I, all the pieces that they eat in here, we ain't got no pieces though. And I'm going to cut it. Just like this. I want to cut it. Just like this. Now when y'all talk, you concentrate, right? One, two, three, four. And now when y'all talk, you concentrate. <laughs> now, will my rose be the same size? I really don't know. I don't think they are. I'm looking at this side, it's thinner than that side. This side, thinner than that side. I don't know. But I'm going straight down the middle. And cut them. Straight down the middle. So I cut a line and I cut straight down the middle. That allowed me to grab and peel and roll apart, just like this. And I'm glad you came, my son. Give me that little pan. About to grease it. The little pan sitting up there on the stand behind me. I made God. I haven't made rolls in about four years. So y'all got excuse me. I'm hungry. If they don't come out right. All right. So I'm going to grease my little pan with some butter. And while these are, rest, are rising again for another 20 minutes, um, we're gonna get the water on for the mac and cheese. So yes, I am greasing this pan. So, I grease my little pan. And I'm gonna sit my pan right here. So you guys can see it. Ah, oh, this kitchen, this kitchen. And I'm just gonna take this roll like this. And I'm just gonna fold it under. Fold it under into a ball. Fold it under into a ball. And it's like a ball like this. And I'm just gonna place it in my dish. Take this one. See? I'm gonna fold it under into a bowl, fold it under, into a bowl. I'm just gonna do just like this. Now I'll put them side by side. And you can have them as big or as little as you want. This one's too big, that's just too big. No, slap your mother too big, I don't want no big roll. <laughs> so I'm cutting that again. And I'm folding it under. Bend it, fold it, fold it. Can you guys see? Ooh, I made it do something about it. it's like Alaska. Fold it under. Into a bowl. See? Now put them in my pan side by side. Take this one. I'm not speed up the camera. And we fold it under. Into a bowl. You can smell the bread. 
twist it. Look, you gotta go. And this is how they line it up, side by side. <laughs> I'm gonna cut them in half again. I don't want big rolls. And I haven't made rolls in a long time. Now y'all, I've been up all night. I ain't gonna be at 7.30 this morning and I got up at 9.30 and I started cooking at 10. Looking at that dead gone barbarian. So, there's a lot of things this video that I said I was gonna do, I didn't do. No mashed potatoes, no double eggs, no desserts. I'm gonna do a Thanksgiving dessert video. Then I'm gonna do a garlic mashed potato video for the perfect garlic mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving. I'm gonna do that video separate and I'm just gonna make it something to go with it for the family. Maybe it's the Salisbury steaks or something. I don't know. Cause at this point, y'all, she ready to sleep. I'm just talking real, being real. I'm going to cut them in half. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, like I said, I haven't made rolls in a long time. So, there's no guarantee <laughs> that they're going to come out even. Right. Michael said, they look good. You can smell the yeast and the bread. I use bread flour, but you can use... um. You can use um, flour, and these are gonna rise again like for 20 to 30 minutes. You don't get another rise on them. Cut them in half one more time. And no reason I haven't stopped, because we might like to see you um, Do that um perfect dough. Um a perfect row. Now this is with my mom. I had to do this together when I became an adult. One of real yeast rolls because my mom she wasn't a um she wasn't a baker and um she wasn't fooling, fooling around with nothing homemade or anything so we used to have those brown and syrup rolls but i ain't gonna lie that brown and syrup roll was the best rolls ever <laughs> they were the best rolls ever in my little roll I'm gonna put it right next to it. Some are gonna be some. Look like someday y'all ain't gonna be the same size. Let's take this size and come it down into a little nap. Maybe because I didn't make my square. And now, and then one reason why I don't want them too big, because I've been cooking in this oven all day. And you both cook these rolls for 375, but eight to 10 minutes. Ah, this oven temperature is off. Because I got one oven, I'm gonna get one. And one day I'm gonna get a place where that. Um, I always want a house with two ovens because I am a cook and I got my ass more dough to this one. This baby just little. I am a cook and I cook a lot, and you know this this dough is good because you feel you can see the elastic in it. There's gonna be some good yeast room. I'm 
get a nice amount of rolls. So if they come out great, honey, family gonna love them. It's almost definitely gonna be bigger than the other. All right, guys. When I be back, these gonna rise again. Almost down to the last little bit. I'll get up with a whole tray of rolls. Because I cut them in half. You can make them as big or as little as you want. Get them to that ball. Like I said, I've been cooking all day on this stove. So, I'm going to cook on 375. I'm not sure. I might have to cook one. Because I, I don't want them to be golden brown on the outside. And then don't be done in the inside. You know what I mean? So, I'm still trying to determine what I want to do with these. I'm going to put my macaroni and stuffing in the oven and then mix up the potato salad. So, I was trying to figure it out. The oven is really, really hot. My ring is done. My game is done. Told y'all this is gonna be a long video, <laughs> and we did that. <laughs> we made this into a long. Put that last two together. Right. And look at my rolls. Y'all count. 4, 8, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We got 24 rolls with this recipe. And these I'm about to put the, um, I clean this um, candle off and put my, um, what's this thing called? Tea towel back over top of it and let them sit for like 30 minutes. And then we're gonna put some melted butter and honey. And yeah. Alright, guys, it's official. I can't stir up anything anymore. My hand officially just got locked on me because of my arthritis. So, Jackson is pouring. I got two pounds of macaroni noodle. So he pouring the whole thing of um, chicken. Go ahead and put chicken broth in there and mix it with water because that helps get some flavor. So, we're gonna use all of that. Now that automatically comes on when my kitchen get hot, my son try to turn up. I can't stir them while I'm just stirring the greens up and my whole hand is locked on me. So my stirring ability is officially over. <laughs> Jackson pulled me. You got stir the greens up for me. I put some vinegar and garlic powder in them. I thought I did it early, but I didn't. So I put some more vinegar and garlic powder in them and stir them up. The meat, the greens is done, baby. All right, y'all, we're gonna let this come to a raging boil. Okay, so small, look at my rolls. Look how they double in size. Some are bigger than the other, but they did double in size. So I got some melted butter that I'm going to add some honey to. And I'm going to use this melted butter. And my oven is on 375. It's oven been on all day. I'm thinking, because I want these rolls to cook, I don't want them to be um this butter honey I'm adding to this. I don't want them to... um get brown on the top and don't cook in the inside. So I think I'm gonna take my oven down to 350 and just let them cook, y'all. Because, again, I don't wanna, um, they be done on the tops. 
Y'all look at that butter and honey. You know, I made rolls for such a long time, and the portions are all, and I don't want them to um, cook too fast. And I want them to be golden brown and, ooh, gonna taste good. Make you smack somebody. So, with that being said, they all ready. And look at that. I'll put them in the oven on 350. Typically, if you were doing this, your oven wasn't already heated, haven't been going all day, 375, 8 to 10 minutes, anywhere between 8 to 12 minutes. But I'm going to put them down 350, and I'm just, and I'm going to um, do the time on them for you guys. Because I don't want them to get dark and don't get done. All right, so, so we're about to make that room. I got one stick of butter. And we ain't talking you make the gravy, and this is unsalted butter, guys. You always do partial parts, partial, you know, equal parts, equal parts. So, and I told you guys, because your um, macaroni is a loose flavor, I use my salted tea seasoned flour to make my roux in because that flavor is going to incorporate into my cheese sauce, onto my noodles, and then sometimes, and if you don't get enough flavor, add a damn bit of garlic and garlic powder, onion powder, but not too much. But remember, the flour is already seasoned. And some people can just know, I gotta add my, um, I gotta still add my season. So, turn the stove down. Be careful not to burn your flour. I mean, burn your um, butter, cause butter do cook bad. We're gonna let this cook off. Let me, um, Put you guys up just a tiny bit. There you go. So it's a half a cup of butter, a half a cup of flour. And we're gonna let this cook off like a minute or two because you don't want your room to have a flour taste. And my stove is turned down low because I don't want it to like burn. But yeah, this is quick, this is simple. The macaroni noodles is done and drained. Yeah. Camera went dead, phone went dead, had to put in the charger, so I couldn't show y'all me pulling the macaroni into the water. But you guys know, once the water comes to the bowl, pull your macaroni in. So my phone is now at 60%. I think we can wrap this video up, because now the rolls in the oven, the stuffing in the oven, the greens done, the yams done, the chicken done. Oh, Jackson, can do a form on my chicken. Chicken done, the ribs done, and now the macaroni drape going in the oven. When I put the macaroni in the oven, I'm going to pull the little foil off the stuffing. And while the macaroni and the little foil and the rolls wrapping up, the rolls in the oven now, they'll be done waiting for the macaroni. They, they, I turned the stove down to 350. Even though those rolls were 375, I turned the stove down to 350 just because I've been cooking on the stove all, all day. I don't want no brown rolls on the outside and doughy in the inside. So yeah, that's why I did that. But typically, if you're just using this oven for the first time, I'm going in about like three cups of milk, guys. If you're using this oven for the first time, and yes, please cook them on 375. All right. Now I'm just gonna stir that up. Ooh, I can smell the yeast. That's honey, I made bread, okay? And I use Velveeta's. This is the third, this is the um, 32 ounce Velveeta's. I don't chop it up. It's, it's out, it's soft. It's at room temperature. I just throw it in there. Just throw it in there. And I've used sugar. Some people use condensed milk. I use sugar in my macaroni. Yes, you do. And I just started adding cream chicken. Honey, just found out that just takes me to another level. Macaroni already good my way. You just adding all them extra flavors, baby. You know what I'm saying? Extra flavors, baby. All right. I got 
my eight ounce bag of mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna use the whole bag. I got some Kobe Jack. I'm not using this whole bag. This is a this is a family size 24 ounce. I will be using all of it in my macaroni, but not just this whole bag and the cheese sauce. Need about two cups of the cheese sauce, and the rest is for my macaroni noodles. And then I got some Kobe Jack cubes, but that's going in the macaroni noodles. So the only thing we gotta do now, baby, this is gonna low, clean up my mess, and watch it so it won't stick. And we gonna put this macaroni together. Okay, guys. I got my noodles in my in my bowl. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys, this is um, 16 ounces of macaroni. I do not um, do eggs in my macaroni anymore. Just because in the summertime, my little cousin came over and you really don't need it. The egg, the macaroni gonna stay together. It's just that our mother's mothers told us that about letting the macaroni stick together. The macaroni still takes the same. I'm doing a stick of butter. The macaroni still tastes the same. Um, it don't taste any different. I don't get a different flavor from it or anything. I'm going in with my Kobe Jack Square cheese. Um, I don't get the flavor. And you know, when people come over, I want them to enjoy my food. A lot of people are allergic to eggs and you know, they'll opt out for not eating macaroni. And I didn't know that's why my little cousin would never eat macaroni. Cause you know, by us being the family that we are, you know, they always thought, you know, it's eggs and macaroni, so you can't eat it. Cause if your mom cooked, your mom know about eggs and macaroni. So, yeah. So there's no eggs. Even though she's not here, I done got used to the, I done got used to not placing the eggs in the macaroni, so I'm just not gonna do it. And it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make my macaroni no different. So what I did is that if you had some shredded cheese, I used the Kobe Jack square blocks because I thought I had a bag of shocked cheddar, or I thought I had another bag of uh, Kobe Jack, and I don't. And I like to put the extra cheese in my noodles, so that's why I use those squares. They're gonna melt up in the stove just as fine. And I'm going on top of those noodles. I got the butter. I'm going on there with this cream of chicken, guys. It's dark in my kitchen. I need better lighting. It's Sunday. That cream of chicken is gonna help give them noodles flavor. It's gonna help them noodles. So like if you get a piece of noodle with no um you get some noodle with no seasoning, with no cheese or something on it, at least you know it's gonna taste like something. That's why I cook my um and this is one 10.5 ounce can of condensed cream chicken. Condensed cream of chicken. You can opt out. I just started doing this about two months ago and I found that it's delicious. So you don't have to. So I'm just stirring it up. When we get the cheese in here, I'm about to call on somebody else to stir. But right now, this is an easy stir, but the cheese is going to make it heavy. And I'm not going to be able to stir it once it gets heavy. But I can stir it in as much as I can. This um, cream of chicken. And also, My hand starting to lock, so I'm about to leave that alone. My hand starting to lock on me. Yeah, yeah, I need more lighting in my kitchen. It is dark in here. Hope you guys can see as much as you can see. All right, I got the sour cream. I'm not gonna add the sour cream yet. Jackson, bring me the um number four. Got my cheese on low. It's gonna go in here, it's all gonna get stirred up together. It's gonna get pulled back in the pan that it's gonna be cooked in. A little bit of cheese will go in between with the cheese will go on top. And guys, FYI, I know a lot of people like it full. 
on the um, mac and cheese. Um, and I do too, but I've never told you guys, when I put the foil on mac and cheese, spray your spool with some type of vegetable oil. Spray with some type of vegetable, um, some type of pan, vegetable oil. That way, when your macaroni and cheese is cooking in the oven, and it's time to come out, and you lift that foil off, it won't, um, the cheese won't stick to it. Y'all, man, these yeast rolls in here cooking, they looking amazing. I hope, and I, I, I got my finger crossed on these rolls. Jackson, bring me a piece of the foil. Y'all hear me call Jackson's name in a minute all day, but yeah, I think I, I, I need assistance right now. I've been cooking for over six hours, and my my arthritis is kicking in. But like I said, I didn't get a chance to make the double eggs or the garlic mashed potatoes. Uh, and I'm going to make the gravy dough. So I'm going to do a video on a, um, a dessert video. I'm going to do a sweet potato pie video, a carrot cake video. I'm going to do a garlic mashed potatoes. I'm going to show you guys to get some real good garlic mashed potatoes. You can roast on 425 degrees. Take the garlic, cut the top off the whole bud and season the top of that bud, put some olive oil, wrap it up in foil, put it in the oven on 425 for like um, 30 to 45 minutes, take it out, and it's going to be so soft. You get to squeeze that good, fresh garlic into those potatoes, and honey, going to make the best um, garlic mashed potatoes you've ever tasted. Um, let me check on these rolls, get a little more food for this because my cheese sauce is still melting. And like I said, the family is ready. Once this food in the oven, I'm going to mix up potato salad, and they're just going to be eating. All right, guys, here go the rolls. Oh, wow. <laughs> like I said, I wasn't too sure on their cooking process just because, I don't know, they smell good. They can smell them in the house. And just add some more of this butter and honey. I can't really pull one apart. They're like they sunk in the middle. I don't know, because the little ones are so, yeah. But, I don't know. Give me about 10 minutes and I'll try to pull one apart for you guys and see what they looking like. Like I said, my oven been cooked on all day. So I had to change the temperature of time on them. But, they look good. And it's butter and honey. All right, give me about 10 minutes, y'all. The cheese sauce is coming along. Yeah. Alright, get my homemade. Y'all know I was pressed, right? Oh my god, look at that, y'all. We got rolls. Ha! Ooh, we got some homemade rolls, y'all. That 350 did it. Again, it should be cooked on 375. But look at that. That 350 did it. I got that butter honey on there. Let me tell you. Boom! Good homemade roll. Use roll. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Mmm. It's real. And they done. And they done. Okay. And they good. Okay, guys. I'm about to pour my cheese. Let me wash my hands. Pour my cheese in my um. I can pour the cheese in there, but. I'm gonna get somebody to cheese sauce is ready. We got a few couple months, but that's okay. Now I have to get somebody in my family. Stir it up. Now I want my fingers to start hurting. I'm going to try, y'all.
Yeah, that roll tastes good as heck. Follow that. Mm. Yeah, I'm trying to I'll put a little bit of sugar. I told y'all I put sugar. And don't buy go, oh my gosh, put sugar. Yes. Some people pick a dense milk. And that's sweet. That's it, that's all. Like Stir it up. The salt and the sweet. It does something. Y'all see I'm stirring. I'm not gripping tight. Okay, y'all. Y'all almost got to come back and go and put the sour cream in here. <laughs> I gotta let y'all see me do my sour cream and my son gonna stir it up. Let me find out. I almost got to come back and go in here. I'm like, oh, I gotta put the sour cream in. I had about a half a cup. I just used a whole 16 ounce, but yeah, I'm using what I got in the house. Okay? And I don't know, Mike, you might want, you got better grip, so you may want to use something different from me. But I got this all messy, but you probably can stir. But I got to buy some more spoons. I don't know where all my spoons went to. Oh, you're not on me, go ahead. You good? I got right in the pool. Move, I'm gonna move up, but you can get some grip. Go ahead. You got to dig down there and stir. Take that one out. Yeah, you got to flip and stir, honey. Hello, this is the cooking guy. Yeah, stir my sour cream all up in there. Go to the bottom. I am going to the bottom. Show I don't know how to stir, y'all. Y'all, I'm finished cooking. I got this, I'm going to mix some potato salad up. This is going in the oven. Potato salad? Yeah, I got me some taste salad and I'm done. Taste salad. While this cooking, the taste salad, me some taste salad. The stuffing is still cooking because that's dry. Then you want to stuff it to dry out and get um brown. And and I'm just gonna show y'all overall view of everything. You gotta do. You gotta take the bowl, pull some in there, pull it in the top of there. Amen. Good guys, I'm now pouring the mac and okay. cheese, half of the mac and cheese, back in my pots. Because guys, I gotta put good things to the other ready pot. I gotta use the same pan that the cheese is in because the little pans that I have for well, today, they just to the top of my heat if you want to. Then you coat with that cheese. Just sprinkle some cheese in the middle. And this one work? Yeah. Put the cheese in the middle, then lay it the rest of the macaroni on top. Sprinkle the cheese on top. My hand's clean, don't worry about it. Oh no, he wants to sandbag me. I make sure of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't see everything. <laughs> Lay some to the top. And pour the rest of the macaroni cheese. Baby, she's going in the oven for one hour, 45 minutes to 50 minutes. Just spray the macaroni cheese out and put the rest of the cheese on top. Just make sure that everything up in there. I'll put some more foil on there. Again, spray the little foil so the cheese won't stick to it. I got some, I got some um, vegetable oil spray. I'm going to spray my foil with Water more cheese, y'all. I'm just making it in the center. I'm not turning all around. You might guess it's center. 
The commandments are winning. And then what? In, in, in the last five weeks? Is it really? uh, this is their third day in a row. When did McCall live? Right there. And that's your macaroni and cheese, y'all. You watch his hands again. I had the vegetable spray. Look on the shelf. Oh, it's right there in front of you, the black top. On the shelf right there in front of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm digging the bowl. <laughs> So we spray this with some vegetable oil. Again, just spray it with some vegetable oil and place it. I need two of them. I'm gonna hold it. Spray it with some vegetable oil. Take it with All right. He sprayed me like I'm going in a damn oven. All right, y'all. My son will put this in the oven. Y'all see the image? Okay, there? guys. I got my potatoes all cut up. I got my potatoes cut up. I'm going to go in with my seasonings on my potatoes. My ball eggs is in here, but they're not cut up. Cause they, guys, I like to squish my eggs. So, I'll go with a little bit of garlic powder. I always season my, um, I always season my um, potatoes first. I always do that. I want to get that flavor. I'll season my potatoes first. And then, yes, and I do put sugar in this too. And then after I season my potatoes. And once I mix everything up together, a little bit of black pepper. Had it go on my stash. And get some pepper. All right. Okay. So. I got my gloves. You know it's my house. I don't care about what y'all gonna say. I just grab a pair of gloves because y'all, y'all know I, I buy especially baked ma'am. It's my arthritis acting up. I've been in this kitchen all day. Um Y'all, I eyeball on estimate of what I need. I really don't um measure when it comes to like Oh, somebody come over this relish shop for me. Please. I need the relish open. And y'all use the juice of my relish too, just for more sugar. No. You can do it. Girl, my arthritis acting up. Go <laughs> right, <laughs> That's okay, Michael. I got it. Right, yeah, this is the last thing and I finished cooking. Y'all, y'all, Rachel, open it. Y'all, I made some homemade yeast rolls from scratch. I ain't made no rolls in about three, four years. I right, don't read them rolls is on point. I'm going to say that. Now, I'm going to put my gloves on. Just the right amount of sweetness. Thank you to Soul Top Kisses, cause this is her recipe. But you know, I did deviate a little bit from it, cause I don't use salted butter and all that stuff. So I didn't think I didn't use salted butter. But either way, it, it, it came out good, y'all. Woo! Y'all, girl, y'all just don't know. Let me um, I got my gloves on. So what I want to do first. Uh, let me squish my eggs up. My eggs is in here at the bottom. And I like squishing my eggs in my hand. And I be squishing up potatoes too, in case I find some big potatoes. Ooh, this smells good. I made a potato salad in about four or five months. I 
Hope y'all enjoyed this pre-Thanksgiving side dish video. You know, I got two more side dishes to show you guys. That's going to be the double eggs and the um, garlic mashed potatoes. They're going to be in a separate video. Oh, they might be in the video together. I'd probably put them in the video together. And you're going to get that this week. All right. My eggs are squished. That's what I wanted to do. And I tell you, this does smell good. Honey, it smells good already. Taking one glove off so I can handle my mayonnaise and get my sugar. And I used to put celery powder. I don't know where it's at. That's six. I don't know where it's at. Y'all gonna be getting the celery powder. And you gotta use sweet relish. Some people use pickle. Some people use pickles. It is. I don't. I don't use a lot, and I do my hand with everything, y'all. There you go. I use about maybe two teaspoons, not tablespoons, a couple of teaspoons. Now, my mayonnaise is crap. Real mayonnaise. Don't mean you gotta do it. That's what I do. And I like a dry potato salad. So I'm gonna go in with a little. A little goes a long way. And then, because I don't have a lot of potatoes, so I'm gonna go in with a little. A little goes a long way, y'all. And I still, when I be stirring with my glove, I gotta get my parsley flakes. See, I have a whole lot of potatoes. So, I didn't want a lot of potato salad. A whole lot of mayonnaise up in here. And this at this point, I'll be stirring everything with your spoon, with your hands. Okay, how you do it? It's your kitchen. I'm gonna have my, come out here look for my celery, my celery, um. Everybody said, well, you making potato salad? Yes, I'm making potato salad. I haven't made it in a long time. What I'm doing, I found a couple of big potatoes. And what I do is that, while I'm doing what I'm doing, I, um, I smush them up. And you know, I made this last because my family don't like, um, they don't like um, cold potato salad. That's why I made this last. I think I need a little bit more mustard. It's a little bit too white for me. I like that yellow potato salad. And I like that tang. From that mustard. So, all we saw was a little. And we add a lot, y'all. Let me taste a piece off the glove. Well, Stephanie, mm, that's a lot. That tastes out good. What's this? Onion powder? And more onion powder? Mm, okay, potato salad. <laughs> I ain't never taste that. I'm saying at least about that's my pepper. Y'all better stop playing. I only need the celery. Don't even need it. I like a dry potato salad. I'm just gonna pick like two more tablespoons of mayonnaise. It's two more. That's it. That's all. And we're gonna get that mixed up. Mm. 
That's the. That is good, y'all. Fold up around the edges. I still feel for some big potatoes that I ain't cut up too big and my hand is hurting. Yeah. I got some smoked paprika. It's just enough relish. It's just enough everything. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. My mother loves my potato salad. Let me tell you how good. And you notice no onions, no green peppers and stuff like that. If you want to know, I just make a egg potato salad. But like, if I'm going to somebody's barbecue or something, I know I'm cooking for other people, and I know I'm not going to eat for my kids like it. But green peppers, onions, they don't care. They just love potato salad. So I'll add in green pepper, um, some onions. You know, because I'll make a fully loaded potato salad. And honey, you think I'm taking I'll taste good. Just with eggs, potatoes, relish, mustard, garlic powder, onion powder, pepper, honey, and mayonnaise. You better go ahead and ask yourself what it tastes like with some um, green peppers and um, onions in there. Takes you to a whole different level. I'm telling you. All right. The ridges is clean. Potato salad look good. It's time to do what? Y'all stop here. Make sure this paprika throw a little bit of paprika on top. Decoration. Potato salad, baby. Alright, y'all. I'm done. We're still going to macaroni and cheese. All right, so, so um, my air the sauce stand is still on. I cleaned that as I went along. There's no dishes in my sink. Don't even look like I've been here cooking all this food I cook. So what I cook, while that one stick of butter is melting, I am showing you guys how to make gravy using my salty tea original flour. Y'all, this is the go-to flour. If you don't know how to season gravy, the gravy come out plain, bland, and you keep it too much seasoning and next thing you know your, your food is salty your gravy is salty man use my salty tea flour it makes the best gravy the holidays is coming get y'all orders in get your orders in by the 15th at least by november 15th for the sweet potato pie mix or the chocolate chip cookie mix um the oatmeal cookies um mix is dropping i'm trying to drop it on monday things been happening i couldn't get it up there um and um, the salt tea original flour, spicy flour. Got feature order for at least by November the 15th. So I guarantee everybody they stuff by Thanksgiving. I'm gonna take stuff. If I get one order, it's going out the next day. So it's a half a cup of flour. If I get one order, it's going out the next day. That's how I'm rolling. I'm gonna guarantee everybody they stuff. And just like the last time, I'm making the room for the um the um mac and cheese. You want to let this just cook for a minute or two, but that flour could cook all. So you guys look, nothing in that kitchen. So I'm my towel on the floor because I had some water leak down, and I put a towel right there to catch the water. Ain't nothing. Like I ain't cooked. I washed some dishes up as I went along. I had time to ask nobody. Who gonna clean up the kitchen? And I will be asking who gonna put the damn door food away. So guys, what we show, what I showed you. No, you didn't get to see me. Ah! Collard green smoked turkey neck season. 
chicken's homemade with cornbread stuffing, homemade mac and cheese, um, spare ribs, rotisserie, yams, potato salad. And I'm gonna do the mashed potatoes and the double eggs coming up in the video this week, and the carrot cake and the sweet potato pop coming up, the coming up this week and next week. And so you'll have those videos up. You had those videos way before you start the Thanksgiving shopping, so you can know what to buy. But if that's something, I'm gonna show you how the Grandma Jackie sweet potato pie mix get that um make that pie and pans be good, y'all. Tell you, I'm so tired. Also, I'm gonna make you a plate. No, you're not. I'm gonna sleep. Y'all been up all night long on the TV. I ain't gonna bed at 7:30 this morning. Woke up at 9:30. Got to prep and doing stuff. Really ain't stopped putting food on until about 10:45, 11 o'clock. Turn the stove all the way on low. This is my juice. It's my juice from my um chicken. Depends on how thick you want your gravy. And I have to make a lot because they love gravy up in here. Got the stove turned down low. And I'm just going to let it cook. If it thickens up, I'm going to add some more juices. But I'm just going to make that gravy cook on low. And you can have it as thick as that thin as you want it. I don't like it too thick. I like it too thin. So, yeah, I'm just going to let that cook. I'm going to show y'all the macaroni when we come back. All right, guys, this is the end. Like I said, this is going to be a side dish Thanksgiving video. I showed you guys how I make my yams, my potato salad, homemade yeast rolls, that salty tea gravy, made with that salty tea flour, two potatoes made with Grandma Jack's two potato pie mix, the barbecue ribs. Look at the barbecue ribs, y'all. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to check out how I cook my Thanksgiving, my turkey constantly on um, Thanksgiving, came up the corner, I don't buy. Look at that mac and cheese. Look at that um, chicken stuffing. I'll show you guys how I make my dressing. It's all about the size. The collard greens with the um, smoked turkey mac season well. My family said the green steak is good, y'all. What's up, guys? This is the cooking guy. So T could finish it, but here go the chicken, our two baked chickens. Um, and that's and that's the video. Uh, what day? What the video gonna be up? Uh, tomorrow night. Uh, we'll be up tomorrow night. This tomorrow is tomorrow evening around six. Tomorrow evening around six. Today is Sunday, and and it's gonna be Thanksgiving sides. So is there everything y'all need to know or need to have for Thanksgiving? So that's the video. I got the dessert video coming separate. Uh, dessert video is going to be separate. I don't and know what. And double eggs and mashed, and and double potatoes. Eggs and mashed potatoes. I don't know what day, but they coming sometime next week or before Thanksgiving. So that's the vid. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my mom channel, y'all. So for T, we out of here. Bye. Money shot on the trigger.